Okay, so uh, this is working, yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for the introduction. So I'm going to give you today an overview of how AI can be used for person-centered care, and especially what we mean by it, okay? Um, so why, why we want to, we, we think that this theme is important and why we think that we need to do research on it. Uh, so there is um, a strong concern within the European Union about the sustainability of healthcare services in the next um, 20 to 30 years. Uh, so there is an increase in healthcare expenditure, there is the aging of population, and um, also very, very much relevant is the high cost of managing chronic diseases that goes, of course, higher and higher with, with the aging of the population. So especially in Ireland, um, we have um, a huge percentage of Irish population that is age 65 and over. And uh, as you could see in, in the previous talk, actually this percentage is increasing and increasing. Um, we have... Uh, 21% of these older adults that are frail and then often live with multiple chronic conditions. Um, so in, um, actually there, is, um, there are some studies about how this will affect the um, capacity required in primary care. And those numbers are actually quite scary. Um, so we need to do something about you know, how to um, uh, make the healthcare more efficient, how we can... Um, improve health outcomes and uh, bring sustainability to the overall system. Um, so how we can do it? So essentially we, we, need, we have a need for um, a person-centered approach to care um, versus a, a, the disease-centered approach that we, we, we see now. And especially in this framework, what is very relevant is understanding human behavior and how this can be influenced to improve health outcomes. Um, and in this framework, we, we are focusing our attention on uh, the interactions of multiple chronic conditions and how this can be tackled using um, behavior change and the person-centered approach. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to present to you two projects that we are doing in the lab. Uh, so one is, is, is around human behavior modeling. The other one is around um, multiple chronic conditions management and how we can... Um, use the human behavior modeling to tackle multiple chronic conditions. So, um, so the first project that I, I wanted to uh, present to you is the Human Behavior Change Project. project. So this is a, um, a research project, so it's um, um, pretty scientific. And essentially the collaboration is between IBM Research and uh, those, those, those um, universities on, um, on the left and it's funded by, by Wellcome Trust. So why we, we want to focus on behavior change? So um, uh, healthy behaviors, um, when I talk about healthy behaviors, I talk about, uh, for example, exercising, dieting, um, keeping healthy body weight, not smoking, not drinking. Those are, uh, uh, those are some examples of behaviors that are very important to, uh, to keep on a population level. Because, for example, uh, lifestyle habits can increase life expect expectancy up to 15, 14 years, or 15 years, actually, as well. Um, so it's, it's very important that we actually include the healthy behaviors within the healthcare system and within the model that we want to build around the person. And actually, this is very important. Uh, so we, we are focusing on, on aging and multiple chronic conditions, but this is also very important for... Um, for example, people in the workforce. Um, because in that case, we are trying to increase their life expectancies, but also the quality of, of their life. And this, of course, have a direct impact on, on the healthcare expenditure and quality. Um, so when we talk about the behavioral scientists and the behavioral research, um, we are trying to, let's say, answer to this question. Um, so when it comes to behavior change interventions, where are the type of interventions that works, when they work, um, how well actually they work, and for how long on, for example, which quarter population, on, with which characteristics, and how we can deliver these interventions. So those are the questions that we are trying to, uh, to answer with, with, this, with this effort. So essentially what we are building here 
is um, an AI system for behavior change intervention prediction. So we are working on two different levels. So um, one is that we, um, we, are, we are building an, an NLP system to extract those informations from literature, from documents, from paper, and we are, we are processing this information to, to build a reasoning system to generate new knowledge on one side and to recommend the most effective intervention for a specific cohorts and population on the other side. So, um, uh, so in, in, this, in this framework, the Human Behavior Change Project is um, a very research-oriented project. Um, so how we, how we can use these results on a let's say, a real-life a real, um, a real life setting. Uh, so I will, um, I will introduce you now to the other project that we have that is essentially a bit more practical and will, um, will let us see how we can um, leverage behavior change in a real-life settings, okay? Um, so we are focusing here on multiple crime conditions. Um, there are a lot of uh, use cases that, that, that you can think about. We are focusing on this because there is a huge need for um, managing of multiple chronic conditions in healthcare systems, and there is, so, there is so scarcity of research in this space, okay? There is a lot of research uh, when, when, you, um, when you think about single disease. So there is a lot of research on diabetes, a lot of research on COPD, a lot of research on heart conditions, um, pretty scarce research and effort on managing multiple conditions. And this is actually quite, um, quite relevant because um, it happens um, quite often that when you have multiple chronic conditions, uh, the care plan that you might have for each one of your conditions can actually contradict between each other. So it's important to understand how the person is doing on the overall when they have more than one chronic conditions. Uh, so we, um, so PROACT is a research project, and we are actually, we have a trial of um, 120 patients over 65 years old um, that have more than one chronic conditions in the space of diabetes, COPD, and heart diseases, so CHF and CHD. They are equipped with wearable environmental sensors, and we are monitoring them and try to see how they are doing and how we can promote them to actually self-manage their conditions. Uh, so this is a high-level um, platform data flow. Um, so on the left, uh, you can see the person. So the person is equipped with um, a set of devices. Um, you can think about uh, blood pressure cuff, you can think about blood glucose monitoring, uh, depending, of course, on the conditions that they have. They also have a tablet where we put a care up where they can actually answer questions about their mood levels, about their, their overall state, about their social interactions, about their activity levels. We collect all of those data. Those data are collected into, into an IoT platform, this CABISIMS. And after that, they are actually pushed, they are de-identified, anonymized, and pushed through Interact. There is a cloud-based service where we have built a bundle of care analytics to process this data and get insights from, from the data we, that we have. Um, so Interact is our um, cloud-based platform. So, is, um, uh, so it is essentially a platform for multimorbidity management. It's, it's built on top on IBM Cloud and uses IBM Cloud and for storing the data. So what is very relevant about this platform is that it lets, to, it lets you to run a sort, a sort of care analytics that will give you insights on your, on, 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 on your population and your patient. So I'm going to present now to you just one of those um, uh, care analytics, um, the health and wellness profile. So we have built a tool to essentially represent the state of the person when they are, of course, depending on the, condi on the conditions that they are affected to. So the state of the person is actually scattered over several dimensions, including behaviors. Behavior is a very important one. 
And um, what we would like to, to see is how all of those variables actually um, correlate between each other and what is the effect that they have on, on the overall health of the patient. So we have used the tool for a, a number of use cases, uh, including, re, including risk identification and prediction, and next best action. So what is very important here is that um, when we think about people affected by multiple chronic conditions, we have to think that those people have a network of, of care workers, okay? These care workers need to be I need to, be, to, to decide about the next best action for each one of these person and needs also to, uh, to know how, how is that person doing compared to what, what, what they are expected to do, given their state, given their conditions. Um, so for this reason, we, we have also used this tool for resource allocation. So how can I... Uh, uh, so how the, um, the schedule of the, care worker, the, of the care workers can be optimized to serve the needs of the, of the pool of people that, I, that they, they have to, um, to care about, to care after. Um, so I don't have enough time to show you the demo, but please feel free to reach out to me if you want to know more about it. But essentially we have uh, a dashboard where, where you have a lot of... Um, variables describing your person, so it could be demographics, conditions, vitals and symptoms, and behaviors, and you can actually click on each one of those tabs, and the system will give you, um, will update all the probabilities and will give you uh, the probability, for example, of a person having, um, for example, it will give you the probability of the social participation level for a person having hypertension and diabetes, or it will give you the probability of being obese for a person having CHF and hypertension. Um, so please feel free to reach to me if, if you want to know more about it. I don't have enough time to actually to show you the demo now. Um, so I'm actually done. So thank you for your <laughs> attention. Thank you very much, Alessandra. That was uh, really interesting. I think it, it really brings to the fore the importance of, of, of collecting data and understanding, I suppose, what is happening in the day-to-day -day lives of patients um, to drive better outcomes um, it, you know, within our healthcare system. We've alluded to already the spend within healthcare that is you know, um, quite really an incredible chunk of our, of our GDP um, and to be able to drive any efficiencies um, within that. One of the challenges that I'd just like to quickly ask you about, collecting this data, you're looking at, let's say, potentially elderly, um, infirm, yeah. chronically ill patients, their interaction with these collection devices, granted wearables uh, mm -hmm. um, could be fairly innocuous and they wouldn't have to interact too much, but something you know, like the, the tablet computer or if there's an app on their phone mm -hmm. and interacting with that, how did you manage those challenges? Yeah, so actually uh, that was quite surprising. So we had a team of researchers and actually triage nurses as well devoted to take care of, of, of this pool of people to uh, teach them how to use the... Um, uh, the care app that they had, the tablet, the wearables, and so on. So we had, the, let's say, a period at the beginning where people were actually a bit struggling in using the devices and, sure. and, and the tablet. But then, after, let's say, a month or so, they actually they, they got used to them, and, and they were actually so much engaged that some of them actually brought the tablet and the sensors with them in the hospital when they were hospitalized. And they were going on sending data to us and, and um, getting our recommendations on activity levels and everything. And because they, they felt that uh, they were in power of, your, sure. of, of their condition and of their, let's say, um, health state. Um, and that was actually quite surprising. Um, Very good. So, I suppose then the old adage of you can't teach an old dog new tricks really doesn't hold true that they, um, you know, they're certainly there and if they can be engaged and empowered, that's yeah. certainly something that they're, they're well capable of. Excellent. Alessandra, thank, thank you. you very much. Most thank interesting you. talk. Thank you. Thank you.